Now moving on to pulses, which we're gonna demonstrate on our clients. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about the pulse sites that are accessible to examination. So for most of the pulse sites in the body, we would be wanting to do a bilateral check as much as possible, because remember we love that symmetry. So we wanna compare the right side to the left side. However, the one that you never ever do bilaterally would be the carotid, because then your patient could pass out. Another one though that commonly in practice is only done one at a time when it's done is the femoral, which I'll talk about why in just a moment. But remember that the locations of your major pulse sites are also the locations of your major arteries. So I'm gonna start from the top and go down. So the first one is going to be our temporal. And so again, that's gonna be over that temporal bone just in front of the hairline. And we would want it to be two plus the regular rate and rhythm. Mm -hmm. Next, we have the carotid. So we're gonna check the carotid, which is typically in that region of the sternomastoid muscle. And this is the one we'd wanna do one at a time. Two plus the regular rate and rhythm. You'd palpate the other. Very good, two plus with a regular rate and rhythm. And now remember, pulses we grade on that zero to four plus scale. So zero would mean that it's absent, it doesn't exist. Okay. So oftentimes, if you can't find a pulse, think one, is your patient dead? If they're not, if they're clearly breathing, talking to you, responding, then make sure you're in the right location. And everyone's anatomy is different. So oftentimes use certain landmarks to guide you, but then don't be afraid to find different locations and try out different things depending on that individualized person. So I think pulses are arterial, but it's also finding a pulse is an art because sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse. Depending on the patient, you might have to flatten your fingers a little more or curve them more, again, based on their anatomy. So now we're gonna go to the ones of the upper extremity. So I'm gonna have him extend his arm. And again, we would typically be doing this both sides, but for purposes of showing the location better, I'm gonna do just one side at this time. So we have the radial and the ulnar arteries. So we have the radial and the ulnar pulse sites. And remember also, pulses are protected by the body. So oftentimes where you see a tendon or a ligament, the pulse is gonna be just to the side of it. And so for the radials, the radial is always gonna be on the thumb side. So radials are radical. So I always think thumbs up. So that's where you'll find the radial pulse. And again, two plus with a regular rate and rhythm. Now we'll check the ulnar pulse. So the ulnar pulse is gonna be in that little divot next to that tendon that is on the pinky side. So I always think pinky, ulnar, P-U, like stinky pinky, like smelly. Okay. So that helps me remember which one's the radial, which one's the ulnar. So you would press, and it would be two plus of the regular rate and rhythm. The ulnar artery is a little bit smaller than the radial, so the radial one is commonly used when we're actually assessing and counting as far as heart beats per minute. The commonly used is the radial pulse. For an infant, though, we typically use the apical pulse, which is at that fifth intercostal space left midclavicular line, or fourth in an infant. We typically use that one for infants unless we're doing infant CPR, and then in that case, the brachial is commonly used. Nursing school is hard work. SimpleNursing.com makes it simple. We take your classroom lectures and notes to create a handcrafted study plan with specialized videos and visual study guides that highlight only the top tested need to know key points, coupled with thousands of practice questions to test your knowledge, all neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free today. Visit SimpleNursing.com. So where do you find that brachial pulse? So with this patient, you can see the tendon right here kind of that roly-poly tendon in that antecubital area. So you're gonna go medial and press down. And that is also the same pulse site that we use if we're doing that two-step blood pressure that we did in our vital signs video. You'd be using that radial pulse. And I find that a lot of times it's more inside medial to the body than students expect. I find students trying to find it in the middle a lot right here, but then you feel that strong roly-poly tendon in the middle, so you want to go right to the side of that, and typically you'll find that pulse tucked right underneath. So when I talked about two pluses are regular, three plus or four plus would be strong or bounding. And sometimes you can find where it's, if it's a bigger artery, then it can feel a little bit stronger. Smaller arteries, sometimes it can be either harder to find or be a little bit weaker. So zero would mean absent, you can't find it. So you would try to make sure you're, if the patient's not dead, then make sure 
check your location. If the patient has any type of swelling or any type of edema, sometimes you might want to press down a little bit firmer to try to get through those layers of edema or if they have extra subcutaneous fat, you want to press through those layers if you're certain you're in the right location. And then if all else fails, you can get a Doppler. If you're unable to palpate, but you know your patient, if it's warm to touch, if you have a capillary refill, so then perhaps if pressing down firmer doesn't help, then you can get a Doppler device. So with this, you would get a little bit of jelly and you would wanna put it in that location of where you're looking for that pulse. So if we were, if it was in this radial location, we'd put a little bit of jelly there and you essentially, as if it were a marker, you'd put it right down and you would hear a Like a swishing sound. A swishing sound that would go with each beat of the pulse. So this can be utilized, especially if patients, if it's very weak, hard to feel, if there's any type of edema or any type of subcutaneous fat. Now a little side note here. Using the Doppler is typically not a good thing on the NCLEX or even nursing exams. It usually means diminished pulses, which is expected after certain procedures. For example, your client went to the cath lab and got a huge tube in their femoral, and now that one leg has diminished pulses. Now, if you have to use a Doppler, it means that the pulses are so diminished that you can't even feel them. So using a Doppler, we typically have to alert the healthcare provider because we have such diminished pulses, you can't even feel it. So let's talk about the femoral. Okay. So the femoral one, it's deeper and it's inset because it's in all of these inguinal ligaments and we have larger muscle groups around there and in that hip region as well. So actually we had our patient have his shorts on because it's a good visual for where to find it. Because oftentimes I find students feel uncomfortable with finding this or how to find it. And because it's so inset, you need the patient to kind of frog leg or externally rotate that hip joint to be in this position. Most of our patients can't frog leg both at the same time. They don't have that hip flexibility. So it is acceptable practice to do one and have the patient frog leg one leg and then check the other and not do this bilaterally. So if you're imagining that you were in the location of putting your finger in the patient's pocket, so essentially be right here as if you were going right into that pocket and in that crease and you would press down and then you could feel that femoral pulse. But so oftentimes, if you think, well, when would I be doing a femoral pulse? It's most likely because the patient went to the cath lab and right. they and they used that the fem pop uh, and they used that location. And so oftentimes you will have a doctor's order for it. So if they did do, went to the cardiac cath lab and there was a dressing at that site, you might not want to press too hard. So then a Doppler could be used, not commonly tested on in that regards, but um, oftentimes in practice, if you don't want to press because there's a dressing there and you don't want to open up any site that they went through, um, but oftentimes that's the reason why you would do a ephemeral pulse. So then I love the fact that you brought up the pulses below and more peripheral from any site of surgery. So if our patient had a hip procedure, a knee procedure, we get really concerned about the most distal pulses. Same thing with the upper extremity. If they have a shoulder procedure, or let's say they did a cardiac cath through the anacubital area, the most distal pulses are gonna be the most important because you wanna make sure that once we did something, blood flow is still getting past that point. Correct. A lot of times they'll say in a test question, the patient had this procedure, what would be the most important pulse to check? And that would be the most distal in that same extremity. So I love that you brought that up. Fantastic. So the next one, thank you so much, we have the popliteal. So remember pulses are protected. So you would want to have the patient slightly bend their leg and you're going slightly bend. You would want to have the patient slightly bend that knee and you're going to curl your fingers behind the knee and if you can feel that tendon ligament and go just to the side of that and then you can feel and it's going to be under the knee but more medial to the body and you'll feel that beat 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 now i worked in ortho for many years okay and very commonly especially if patients have swelling of the lower extremity mm. this can be a very hard pulse to find and especially if they have lower extremity edema or if they have a lot of subcutaneous fat or if they just had surgery at that site so then again if you can't get this one, very important to either use a Doppler or even more important to go distal. Because if blood flow, if we can find a pulse down here, then we know it's getting past this point. We know this one's okay. Correct. So the first one, actually I'm gonna have you frog leg again just to show. 
we're going to do the posterior tibialis. So the posterior tibialis is, if you think the tibia and the fibia, how I remember the difference between which one's the tibia, which one's the fibia, the tibias are on the inside. So I always think if you were to click your heels together, the tibias touch. Oh, okay. So the tibias are on the inside. So for the posterior tibialis, you always go on the inside of the ankle, not on the outside. So posterior tibialis, the inside and posterior to this ankle bone. So if you were doing bilaterally, you would just curve your fingers behind the ankle bone. And my patient here has actually a very strong posterior tibialis. So I would almost call this one three plus. All right. But I did ask my patient to hydrate because that always makes your pulses stronger and he understood the assignment. <laughs> so I would say that one's probably about three plus. So if the client is dehydrated, then you would have weaker pulses. Absolutely. So if your client has one plus weak and thready, which sometimes we use that phrase thready to describe when it's weak, but also fast, like kind of light and fast, which can often happen with dehydration where the client has an increased heart rate, but they're gonna have weaker pulses. So next, I'm gonna have you bend your leg just like that, perfect. Here you can see my client popping up this tendon right here. I'm gonna use that as a landmark, because again, because again, usually if you can find that tendon or a ligament, then you go just to the side of it. And this time, we're actually gonna go lateral to it to feel for that dorsalis pedis pulse. So remember, dorsal means top, like the dorsal fin of a dolphin, mm -hmm. pedis meaning foot, so dorsalis pedis is the top of the foot. And I've seen patients where it's a little bit higher, a little bit more midline, and so his is perfectly positioned right here and also is a three plus. So we look for that tendon and somewhere in the middle. Yes. Now it's not uncommon to see inside the trauma setting or in a trauma center or even the ER where paramedics will actually put an X for us to simply locate any diminished pulse or even a pulse in general, because sometimes it's hard to assess. I'd say that's a very good practice and done pretty commonly where if at any point, especially if you, if you needed to use a Doppler or if you yourself had a hard time finding it, in order for yourself to find it quickly and easily in the future or for another practitioner, using a skin pin and doing an X where you found it helps especially with that location and for others to compare using the same site. So now for some practice questions. The nurse palpates the top of the client's foot on the side of the great toe. Which artery is the nurse palpating? Dorsal pedis. Remember, dorsal is that dolphin fin, basically the top of the foot, and pedis is like a pedicure, right? So that's the top of the foot there. And another question. The nurse is palpating the pulse just under the inguinal ligament. The nurse is assessing which pulse? femoral. 